against the San Diego Chargers 14 and 2 a year ago. Who else would get it? The MVP, LaDainian Tomlinson. Picks up only two. Tomlinson won the rushing title last season. 1,815 rush yards. That was good enough to lead the league. He set 13 NFL records last year, including the 28 rushing touchdowns, 31 touchdowns overall, and he threw two touchdowns. I don't know how he's going to improve on that. I do know that he feels that as involved as he was last year in the offense within the system that North Turner will be running here this year he'll be more involved gets it again cuts up field after starting out left picks up two and Mark Anderson the second year player who was sensational last year his 12 sacks leading the NFL among rookies is there to make the stop for Chicago third down and six you know LaDainian Tomlinson did not play at all in the preseason he also did not have any carries a year ago in the preseason and so you always kind of wonder how a guy is going to be able to come into this season opener and is it going to take some time for him to get him to get reacclimated to the contact he says it will not but I've got to believe you've got to shake off some of the webs third down and six Rivers first throw behind LT makes the play picks up a first down what a catch. You know, Philip Rivers and talking with him, he thought last year he could have done a lot better job of getting down to the checkdowns when it wasn't there down the field. You see, he knew exactly where LT was going to be. A heck of a catch there, one arm ball behind him. But LaDainian Tomlinson able to bring it in and pick up a first down. It's bounced to Tomlinson. Second and ten. Tommy Harris defending for the Bears. We welcome a new audience just joining us here in San Diego. A great first weekend matchup of this 2007 NFL season. The Chargers 14 and two a year ago against the NFC champion Chicago Bears. Tomlinson has touched the ball. On every play so far, the reigning MVP in the NFL, and he gets it again. Nothing in the preseason in the way of carries, as you said, Troy, but plenty of action here early. No gain, and it's third and ten. Yeah, he's been the guy on on the receiving end, and then obviously getting the ball in the backfield on every one of their snaps up to this point. I know what North Turner wants to do. I, he wants to try to establish something early in this game, not get too aggressive, not do anything that may result in a costly turnover. Remember, this is a Chicago Bears defense who over the past several years has benefited by creating turnovers and giving their own offense a short field. Third down and 10. Rivers steps up, throws high, and it's not handled by Tomlinson. Rex Grossman leads his team to the line of scrimmage. And hands off to Cedric Benson. No more Thomas Jones had over 1,200 rushing yards a year ago. Shipped up to the Jets, and they have handed the responsibility to Cedric Benson. And he really looks forward to the challenge. I mean, he's disappointed in the first two years of his career that he was not the workhorse. At every level that he had ever played at, he had been the man. The philosophy for this Bears offense is unchanged from where it was in previous years. They want a heavy dose of the run game. Second and seven, and Grossman is walloped. Sean Phillips is going to ring up his first. John Phillips may not have an easier sack this year. I mean, you watch, nobody comes out to take him. It's off play action. The tight end releases. 
It looked to me like the tackle has got to come out and pick him up. I can assure you that that was not the design to leave Sean Phillips untouched. When you come into this game, you know you're going to get a heavy dose of Sean Phillips as well as Sean Merriman, and you better have a body on him. Third and 14, and Benson goes nowhere. And what a start for this Charger defense. Field like this, you want to come out on the first play and see if you can't take a shot down the field. Quick hitter, Antonio Gates, and the big tight end who is spread out wide to the right, picks up 17. You know, a lot of talk with this San Diego Charger team about the inexperience at wide receiver, but Antonio Gates, who's listed as a tight end, is really their go-to wide receiver as well. You see the release off the ball. They fail to get a jam on him. That's just easy receptions right there when you're talking about one of the premier players in the league. Led the Chargers in receptions, yards, and touchdown catches last year. Tomlinson on a draw. Gets hit hard. Let's talk about Tommy Harris. That is a big piece of the puzzle that's back in there in the interior line for the Chicago defense. A guy who had surgery in December to reattach his left hamstring to his pelvis, and they missed him certainly in that Super Bowl when they got beat up by Indianapolis. Yeah, they really did. I mean, you lose a player of his caliber, then there's a hole there. And, you know, fortunately for them, they've done some things that have provided them some depth. Dvorak, the way he came on this preseason, of course, they traded for Darwin Walker. So far, that interior defensive line's done a good job against Tomlinson. Bears back out of that blitz. For Jackson, good position by Tillman, and they're going to throw a flag. And this could be on Vincent Jackson. Rivers, Gates, beautiful throw. Tap, tap, out of bounds, and 16 yards for Antonio Gates. And it's a ball that Phillip Rivers throws awfully well. He's got great touch within the pocket. You're going to see Antonio Gates there in the slot. All the linebackers were up inside. Adam Marcelletta gets lost in space. There was nobody underneath to influence in him staying flat. He could have gotten more depth and tried to get underneath the throw there to Antonio Gates. It's a big question mark for these Bears. Archuleta's a hitter, but how is he going to cover? And he's got his hands full today with that guy, Antonio Gates. On the near side of the field, Hillenmeyer makes the play, and Gates is short of first down yardage. See if they can't maybe draw this defensive front off sides and pick up an easy first down there. Quick snap, busted play, Rivers picks it up. That's not how old Norv drew that one up. Yeah, or you just let everybody run where they want to run and hope the quarterback has enough awareness to get in behind somebody on a broken play, which, you know, Phillip Rivers, it appeared, went the wrong way. Everybody was slanting left. Lorenzo Neal was going to lead the way for LaDainian Tomlinson, but, again, there was at least enough of a push along that left side behind Chris Dillman, the left guard that Phillip Rivers had the awareness to get in behind it knowing all he needed was a yard for the first down. Good red zone numbers last year for the Chargers. Rivers did not throw a red zone interception last season and Tomlinson swallowed up. Good play off the edge by Alex Brown and he had help with him. Loss of five. Tell you this Bears defense you know you think back to last year and and for the most part they really struggled stopping the running game. I mean that was somewhat of the Achilles heel for them and then late in the year they elevated their play in that regard did a nice job and then they struggled once again when they got into the playoffs and I know that coming into this game obviously when you're going against the league's leading rusher you're going to get a heavy dose of LaDainian Tomlinson and you know they've answered the challenge at least here in this first quarter. Mike Brown was missing for the most part last year for Chicago. Tomlinson makes the catch. He's going to get those five yards back. And it'll be third down and ten for San Diego. You can't hear the quarterback anyway. You should be looking at the ball. You should be the last guy jumping off sides. Third and 15. Tomlinson over the middle. He is brought down immediately by Lance Briggs. The franchise player of the Chicago Bears team and 
No surprise that the Bears defense would lock it down in the red zone. A field goal try coming up from Kading. A great job there by Lance Briggs just staying at home and then being there to make the tackle after the reception. And I know the Bears are fortunate to have him back on this team. Of course, they, they franchised him. They kept him here for one more year, and he's, he's been a good player for a number of years. This one is tipped. No good. Alex Brown got his hand up and gets a hand from Lovey Smith, his head coach. There are a ton of Bears fans here in San Diego, and they love this on a 33-yard try by Nate Kading. Brown knocks it away. Still no score here in San Diego. After the blocked field goal, Grossman with time down the middle. Too high for Muhammad who gets popped. Marlon McCree. With Masin Muhammad all stretched out, McCree made sure there was going to be no one-handed catch. Yeah, well, a receiver just does not like that. Even, even a receiver like Musin Muhammad, I mean, he's one of the toughest wide receivers in the National Football League at going across the middle and making the catch even when he knows he's going to get hit. That ball was just a little too high for even him. Second and ten. Benson, not much up the middle, a gain of three. You know, Troy, for all the attention that Merriman gets, and rightly so, and Sean Phillips, and even Luis Castillo at defensive end, the guy that really makes this 3-4 defense tick is this incredible athlete in the middle, Jamal Williams, their big nose tackle, coming off his second straight Pro Bowl. He is a, he is a man in the middle. Yeah, and the reason for that is, is everyone gets so concerned with trying to get big offensive linemen on Phillips and Merriman that it puts the center on the island in the middle on Williams. A blitz, the throw incomplete for Bernard Varian. Blocked field goal. And a handoff to LT. And Tomlinson is hit hard at the end. Mike Brown with the last hit. Joe. All right, Kurt, thanks. No score here with under three and a half to play in the quarter. Down the middle. This one's picked off by Brown. Mike Brown, welcome back. Still on his feet. And down near the 36. We'll take a break when we come back. Great field position for Rex Grossman and the Chicago offense as Mike Brown picks off Phillip Rivers. Mike Brown gets him here in the first quarter. Cedric Benson stays on his feet and picks up a first down. 11 yards on an impressive run by Cedric Benson. And we go back to the interception by Rivers. Yeah, not a good decision by Phillip Rivers. Here's Mike Brown right here, and what you're going to see is Antonio Gates is going to be going down the middle on a seam route. But Hunter Hillenmeyer, the linebacker, 92 in good coverage. So there was really nowhere to go with that football. Of course, Mike Brown knows that Antonio Gates is the is the leading weapon for this Chargers offense broke on the ball and gets the interception. That was the first Chicago first down of this game and Benson gets it again and picks up four for the first time during the regular season for us. We're pleased to welcome in Pam Oliver. Pam. Well, Joe, Rex Grossman showed no ill effects, no physical one anyway after taking that big hit earlier on in the game. He just simply trots off the field and goes to work. He'll talk on the phone. He'll look at the pictures, chat with the other quarterbacks and his quarterback coach. I did notice earlier he was shaking his right hand around a little bit, but he's got no medical attention, but he has gotten a lot of pats on the butt. Back to you. <laughs> Second down and six. Play action, and that's the fullback McKee. A couple yards shy of first down. There's no doubt that Grossman is tough in more ways than one. Physically, and I would say emotionally, is he's been lined up and guys have taken shots at him for the last calendar year. Well, and, and when, it, when you get hit like that early in a game, you usually one of two things happens. I mean, that's a big time hit. 
And as a quarterback going in, knowing you're going to get pressure, that either rattles you a little bit, and it makes it very uneasy for you to get back into the flow, or sometimes that first hit kind of kind of gets you back into a good frame, knowing that, hey, let's go play now. Peterson on third and two, and it depends on the forward progress. They're going to give him enough for a first down. A generous spot. It was awfully close, and Adrian Peterson, his first carry, gets Chicago a first down at the San Diego 15-yard line. I tell you, between Cedric Benson and Adrian Peterson, they, they've shown some pretty tough running here on this possession. Cedric Benson, more of a downhill, physical-type guy relative to what they were accustomed to last year with Thomas Jones. Adrian Peterson, a lot like that as well. Benson gets it. I think and that could be the final play of this first quarter. Gave their offense such a short field. Second and seven. Cedric Benson plows forward. He's down inside the 10, picked up three. And by the way, as we look at stats, don't forget to log on to foxsports.com or nfl.com and check out what's going on on this Sunday around the NFL. So much information to be had, so many fantasy teams to keep track of, so many fantasy players. And I don't think there's anybody in the NFL who's a more consistent number one pick in those leagues than LaDainian Tomlinson. Third down and four. Grossman in trouble, throws into the ground, and he is wrapped up by Jacques Césaire. Also pressured by Eric Weddle, a rookie, a second round pick, and they both ended up on top of Grossman. Yeah, you're going to see him come off the edge, and it's the second time he's done that today here on third down. He's able to come around the edge. Grossman feels the pressure, and then he has to get rid of the ball a little bit earlier than what he would have liked. The Chargers have brought pressure in key third downs to keep Rex from being able to survey the field. 27-yard try for Robbie Gold. Best in the NFL. Drills it. And so it's the Bears on the road. Seven and one road team a year ago under Lovey Smith. Uh, turnovers. And San Diego knows that, and that's why they're down right now 3 0. Tomlinson over the left side, and there's just no room to run. I think North Turner said it best the other day in that. Early on in games, it's very difficult to run the football, especially when you're talking about a Bears defense that's stout anyway, and they're cranked up, and they know what's coming at them, but you got to stick with it, and that's what San Diego was planning on doing as long as the score doesn't get away from them, continuing to hammer LaDainian Tomlinson, and then those two-yard gains as you move into the second half become five, six, and seven-yard gains. Tomlinson again, and off the edge, it was McGowan who came up to make the play. One of the extra defensive backs for the Bears, no gain, and it's third and long. Yeah, and converting third downs against this Bears defense is a real challenge in itself. I mean, they've got some guys who can really put pressure on the quarterback, and so third and long, you want to stay out of. I've got to believe that because it has been so difficult running the football this early, that you're going to start seeing this Chargers offense start to spread them out a little bit more on early downs. It's Vincent Jackson, the wide receiver, starting this play in the backfield. And now sneaking out and down goes Phillip Rivers. And one of the new Bears, Darwin Walker, a longtime Eagle, is there to fall on top of him. You know, Darwin Walker is a real force when he decides that he wants to crank it up and start playing, and that's exactly what he's able to do here. You know, I thought it was a great trade that they made. All right, Kurt, thank you, and congratulations on a great start today, Fox NFL Sunday. As Cedric Benson carries it over the left side, no gain, and there is big Jamal Williams right in the middle of it. But let's talk baseball, and let's talk about the postseason. The Boston Red Sox... Major League Baseball's best record, the Yankees leading a wild card, the Angels leading a West, the Indians leading the Central, and then the National League. We've got the ALCS on Fox. 
and then the World Series. It all begins October 12th right here in high def. On second down out of the backfield it is Benson he can't hang on. And Troy that's a part of Benson's game that they're going to try and expand. Last year he made only eight catches out of the backfield for the Bears they need him to do more in that department like Thomas Jones did. Yeah and even Adrian Peterson wasn't a guy who caught a lot of balls last year either and so you know you get into a game like this where the matchups are pretty good pretty even that is oftentimes it's that it's that tailback that makes the difference for you. Chargers love this. Tee it up and come after Grossman over the middle Barry and his first catch first down inside San Diego territory and just outside the 41 yard line of the Chargers good throw. You know this is an area where the Chargers last year struggled they'd get teams to third and long and could not get off the field protection here very good knowing that the Chargers are coming and then the route on the back end. Watch Bernard Berry, and he's got great speed. He pushes, he creates separation, and Rex Grossman just puts the ball right on the money. Turned it loose before Berrien came out of the break, and a nice conversion. 21 yards from Grossman to Berrien. This one is not good, and behind Masin Muhammad. Last year, one of the plus categories for Rex Grossman had 47 completions of 20 yards or more, and he was in the top 10 in the NFL in that category he will let it fly. Well, he definitely will and sometimes he lets it fly when maybe he shouldn't but you know that last play on third down one you've got to have good protection if you're going to allow a receiver to run 15 to 18 yards down the field that offensive line did a great job in that regard but then Rex Grossman delivering the throw that's hard to do. Devin Hester a former defensive back in the lineup and this is McKee out of the backfield he picks up only a yard and it'll be third down and nine I'll tell you when you think about a third down conversion like that now you know they've crossed the 50 you know those are the types of plays that you have to make if you're ultimately going to be able to convert drives into points and so I don't know how this drive's going to end. But if they're able to get 10 more yards they're going to be within field goal range and it's not going to show up on the scoreboard or the stat sheet but that third down conversion is what made it happen otherwise they're putting the ball to San Diego also helps you win that field position battle third down and nine Grossman goes down that's the rookie Weddle again the ball came out Weddle has the ball but no indication yet doesn't appear to be too serious but he can do a lot to help out Grossman in the Chicago offense throw is caught by Vincent Jackson picked up nine and a half and this has certainly been a game filled with big hits and it started with the opening kickoff that knocked out Sproles by Donage and Phillips on Grossman Lance Briggs on LT McCree on Muhammad LT again with Mike Brown finishing up and then Weddle that last big play by the San Diego rookie second and one now for the Chargers to the up back the full back the pro bowler Lorenzo Neal first down I want to go back to something you touched on Troy with Tomlinson not playing in the preseason Steven Jackson didn't play in the preseason for St. Louis he had an awful day for the Rams today in their opener against Carolina and North Turner was not used to that he said well, that's what they do out here and I wonder if that's going to change because Tomlinson got off to a slow start last year. There's got to be something about finding a rhythm in a game that is lacking here early. Well I do think it takes some time in order to establish that rhythm. You know you don't want to take a chance obviously of getting a guy like LaDainian Tomlinson hurt in preseason play. But he's just going backward. And now granted this great Chicago defense has a lot to do with that. That's right. And I, and I think Joe I think it I think it does have more to do with what Chicago's doing right now. They're they're stacking the box with eight defenders. And I think a lot of people when they start talking about Lovey Smith and his defensive schemes and you know his system they always talk about this Tampa two defense but they don't really play a lot of that cover two, and especially when they're playing against a team that likes to run the ball like the San Diego Chargers do. Second and 14 
Rivers, Neal drops it. Fullback turned his head before he secured the ball. It's third and 14. You know, there's no question that Chicago right now defensively has been able to dictate a little bit of the tempo. I mean, you watch San Diego offensively. This is a very talented offensive group. Last year, the number one offense in all of football, threw the ball well, ran the ball well. But this Chicago's defense has been terrific in stopping LaDainian Tomlinson. And that's where everything, that's where this whole offense is built upon, is the ability to run the football. And now they are here again, third and long. A blitz from the Bears. Chargers try and pick it up, and somehow that ball gets out to Gates, but he is way short of a first down. It looked like Rivers got hit as he let that ball go. It's all next week, starting with Fox NFL Sunday. Noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. First down, Chicago. Leading 3-0 and a toss to Benson. Good pressure by the San Diego defense. And Clinton Hart, the strong safety, forces Benson out of bounds after a gain of three. 7.05 left in this first half. And it's second and seven for Chicago. Very conservative on the offensive side of the ball for the most part on each side. Ted Cottrell, the defensive coordinator, has to be pleased with the way his group has played. On second and seven, Berrien gets behind the defense and is wrestled down at the 40 by Marlon McCree, a 17-yard completion from Rex Grossman. Good job there by Rex Grossman, setting up in the pocket and delivering a strike. Bernard Berrien, they drew a high-low here. They spread out the defense. They get Bernard Berrien in behind that linebacker level, opens up the window, and as a quarterback, that's a nice thing to see. When you drop back and the linebacker jumps the underneath route, and all of a sudden you just got a cavity there to throw the football. Handoff is to Benson. Benson wrapped up by Merriman and Cesare. A gain of three. San Diego wearing what are typically their road jerseys because of the heat. If one more San Diego tells me how hot it is around here, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> yeah, move to Dallas or St. Louis, yeah. right? This is about as pleasant as it gets. No better climate in the country than San Diego. Second and seven. Grossman throws backward. That was a lateral. And a one-handed grab by Benson, who's brought down by Merriman. That was a dangerous throw. If Benson doesn't come up with it, that was a lateral. Yeah, that's that's dangerous for a quarterback. And you, know, you want that running back more in front of him. And you got Sean Merriman right here. And you're going to see the job that he's able to do and the athlete that he is. He takes on the block. He started, actually came in from the other side. But that he is able to chase that down from the back side. And then a good catch by Cedric Benson. We talked that he hasn't had a lot of reception in, in his career, but that was a nice catch. Third down and 10. Grossman throws, and it's knocked away. Good play by Drayton Florence. You know, even though it was all in fun, the Bears' defense didn't think it was all that funny, especially Brian Erlacher. And I know that they have been highly motivated to shut him down, and they've been successful. Pass complete to the rookie. And Buster Davis picks up five. It was a commercial by that startup company Nike. So nice to give them a free pop on national television. They need all the help they can well, get. Well, I didn't give them the pop. You, no, I'm it'll saying be I am. Right yeah, it'll now. be interesting to see if that company, that startup company, makes it. Well, they got LT. So yeah. That's a good start. That is a good start. And right now, what we're seeing from San Diego offensively is rather than beat their head against the wall with his eight-man front, trying to trying to get the ball out quick. Pressure brought by the Bears, and this one is just out of the reach of Vasher. Vincent Jackson, the intended receiver, and Rivers is telling Jackson he was hit when that ball came out, and that affected the throw. It's third and five. You know, this Bears defensive front has done a good job today getting pressure on Phillip Rivers as well. 
I mean this offensive line for San Diego did a good job last year protecting Phillip Rivers did not give up a lot of sacks it's a veteran group but because Chicago can rotate this defensive front they're able to keep guys relatively fresh third and five and the pass is behind Gates incomplete it hit the ground it's fourth down offenses are struggling like they are either nowhere to go initially for Grossman he finds his tight end Desmond Clark picks up eight now you talked a little bit earlier, Joe, about Jamal Williams and, and how in a lot of ways he's the guy who kind of makes it happen here in the middle. I mean, he's a Pro Bowl player last year, and he just he does not go backwards. You see the respect there that Chicago has for him. Olin Cruz starts out with the block, and then he gets the double team by the right guard, Roberto Garza, and that's the attention that you have to pay him. One-on-one, -on -one, it's a challenge. Second and two, Benson picks up a first down. I mean, you look at the body of Jamal Williams, and he's got the he's got the gut. You need to have the mass, but he is a he is a terrific athlete. He moves around well, and he is part of a rare breed. Guys that are big, athletic, can move. Think of Ted Washington, who's 39 years old, playing for Cleveland. Sam Adams, Grady Jackson. Down in Atlanta, Keith Trailer still playing with Miami. They're tough to find. Ted Cottrell says he's the best nose tackle he's ever coached, and he coached Ted Washington and Pat Williams with the New York Jets when he was there. That's behind Benson, makes the catch, and then makes Merriman miss. Picks up a first down, and the Bear fans who are here love to see that. He went right by Sean Merriman. That's yeah, just a good job in the open field of, of making one of the premier defensive players in the league miss. And this is how you pick up first downs, and it's hard. You're out in space, and, and Merriman overran him. And Merriman told us the other day he loves rushing the passer, but he also likes dropping into coverage because it allows him to run to the ball and take people out. And sometimes you get a little over-aggressive and you overrun the play as he did there. On first down, Grossman airs it out. Barion's not there, but McCree is for San Diego. Interception, Chargers. Chargers take over inside their own five with under two to play in this first half. Okay, so Lorenzo Neal, the fullback, carries, picks up two and back to the interception. It wasn't there, McCree was. Second and eight for the Chargers. Rivers just gets rid of it to Lorenzo Neal and this offense for San Diego isn't doing much of anything. Third and six. Rivers floats it. Gates can't hang on. A little bobble could not haul it in. And another stop for this Chicago defense. Bob Babich in his first year as defensive coordinator has to love how his group is coming after the Chargers. Well, how about the Bears? I mean, they put Adam Archuleta on the premier tight end in football, a guy who many consider not to be a real good cover guy. And that matchup in Boston with the Yankees red hot and leading the wild card race. First down out of the shotgun. Grossman in trouble, loses the ball. Can't fall on top of it. Peterson does for the Bears. And he's back to the 25. Ball security and hanging on to the football has always been an issue for Grossman. Something that he's tried to work on, and that one slipped out. They turned the ball over an awful lot last year, and Rex was the reason for a number of them. San Diego took their first timeout. Peterson gets it on second and 24. Chargers will use another timeout with a minute one remaining. It'll be third and long for Chicago on nine carries. Third and 15. And they do run it with Peterson. It'll be fourth down, and the Chargers will use their last timeout with 56 seconds left. But they are spread out, and we'll see if that's what they're going to try to do. Instead, they do hand to LaDainian Tomlinson. He's to the 15 and shut out in the first half at home. It was 2001 against Kansas City. 
nothing else, they get a positive run from Ladanian Tomlinson, and that's the way this first half is going to end. But to Pam, would he talk to Troy about it? And off is to Benson. And Cedric picks up one. Well, and I do think he's right in that the struggles that Ladanian Tomlinson has had running the football are not because he didn't play in the preseason. It, it really is because Chicago is committed by bringing an eighth guy in the box and just not giving him anywhere to run the football. Therefore, that in order for San Diego to have some success offensively, they're going to need to spread him out a little bit. They're going to need to start throwing the ball a little bit because right now it's just been pointless trying to run the ball. Second down and nine for Grossman who throws and completes. Bernard Barry and a little time back there for Grossman. It depends on the spot. Looks like it may be enough for a Chicago first down. Yeah, I know that San Diego had three sacks on Rex there in the first half, but other than that, he's had pretty good time to throw the football. And sometimes we get so caught up in the numbers of sacks that we don't look at the rest of the picture. I think overall, this offensive line, a very veteran offensive line, has done a good job protecting him. It's the oldest line in the NFL, an average age of 32 years, allowed 25 sacks last year. That's top 10 in the NFL. And it's anchored by that guy right there, Olin Krutz, their Pro Bowl center. Yeah, and he's as good as there is. I mean, there's a lot of good centers in this league, but I don't know that there's any better than Olin Krutz, and he's been doing it a long time. You know, a six-time Pro Bowler now in his 10th season, and you know, when you got a guy like him who you feel can man up pretty good against a guy like Jamal Williams, you're in good shape. Benson carries it. Ball comes out. It's recovered by San Diego, it looks like, with Stephen Cooper on top of it. The nose tackle who knocked it out. Either way, Cooper took it away. And Rivers is brought down before he can even hand off. And there's Tommy Harris. Only seven plays during the preseason, and they say he's back, and he got a good jump on that one. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, he moved the deep, the offensive line. Look right in here, and the push that happens right in the center. I mean, you see Tommy Harris just drive Dillman back basically right into Phillip Rivers. I mean, that play had no chance right from the beginning. You've got to believe Phillip Rivers is going to start using some cadence snap count to try to neutralize the aggressiveness of Tommy Harris. Second down and 15. The pass is caught. That's the rookie Davis, and Buster is good for nine. That first play lost six. And Benson is thinking about that fumble. The nine-yard completion to Buster Davis, and it brings up third down with the ball inside the 40 and they are on the edge of field goal range for Nate Kading. They need a few more yards to make it easier. Kading's career long is 54 yards. And third downs have been a problem so far for San Diego in this game. They've only converted one. Rivers throws, completes, Gates. And Antonio has a first down at the Chicago 27. Pretty well designed play there. Watch LaDainian Tomlinson. He's going to clear that zone and then you're going to have Gates coming across the field which is going to open up that space because LaDainian Tomlinson runs the sideline route. You've also got a natural cross there between the receiver and Gates. It created that void. He got lost at the linebacker level. LT, LaDainian Tomlinson, nothing. Agunlia was there. Briggs was there. Hillenmeyer was in the area. No game. I'll tell you what, at least, at least here over the first two quarters and, you know, plus into this quarter, you know, any questions about this Chicago Bears defense and their ability to stop the run, I mean, they've answered those. I know last year they got real tired of hearing everybody talk about how much they were vulnerable in run defense. They've been outstanding here in this one. Second and ten. Rivers with time. Floats it for Gates, who pushes off a bit incomplete. Working on Archuleta. And Adam Archuleta, for the most part, has stayed with Antonio Gates. 
And Rivers at the end of the play took a big hit and a flag is down. Well, and that's interesting too because he's outside the pocket. Of course, you can't, you can't foul. come in like Nathan Roughing Baxter did. Passer, number 31. Defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. That's just that's just not smart football by Nathan Basher. The ball obviously well out of the hand of Phillip Rivers, and then not only does he hit him late, but he launches. Easy call. So it gives San Diego, instead of a third and ten, a first down with a ball at the 13-yard line. Trailing by three. That's Gates. Rivers behind Tomlinson, and he is forced out by Briggs. Lance Briggs rejected a six year, $33 million deal before last season. Was going to hold out. Thought he might sit out the first 10 games this year when he was designated as the franchise player. Signed his $7.2 million deal. And he is a big part of what Lovey Smith and Bob Babich do defensively for Chicago. I remember before the 2005 season, in talking with Lovey Smith, he said he really felt that that year that Lance Briggs was going to become a household name in this league, and, and he has. Second and seven. Rivers brought down Agunlia. Remember, this drive started because of a Cedric Benson fumble, and it is continuing because of an ill advised hit by Nathan Vasher. But this defense keeps stepping up for Chicago. Yeah, really good job here in, in pass coverage. And, you know, Phillip Rivers had time to get the ball out of his hands. There was just nowhere to go with the ball. And, you know, rather than try to force something, he just went ahead and took the sack. But, you know, the, the problem with San Diego is they've just not really been able to get ahead of the chains. I mean, Chicago's been dictating down in distance for the better part of this ball game. Third down and nine. Rivers fires. The pass is caught. A helmet comes off. The ball comes out. They're going to give a first down, and it was Vincent Jackson in the middle of all that who made the catch. Well, that was a big, a big reception there. You're going to see Phillip Rivers. He's going to put it back on the back hip and try to protect the throw there from Hunter Hillenmeyer, the linebacker. And then they get three guys hitting him on his way down. I'm going to tell you, I just always question when a guy's helmet falls off, I mean, how loose are you wearing your helmet that a hit knocks it off? Scary. Tomlinson did not get in. Inches short of breaking the plane. Second and goal. Let's go for a game break. Here's Kurt Menefee. Kurt. Well, you guys are looking for your first touchdown. Calvin Johnson, number two pick in the draft, has gotten his first touchdown for the Detroit Lions. Off the arm of John Kitna, and right now it's the Lions up 17-0 in Oakland. Back to San Diego and Joe. So the beat goes on for the Raiders. Detroit trying to turn the tide. Huge pressure up front. It looked like the Bears came across before the snap. The ball was loose. It's recovered by Mike Brown. There are no flags on the field. Yeah, I'm shocked, Joe. I agree. It looked like the Bears were well off sides, but yet no flag indicating that the officials agree. We saw Harris do it earlier. Watch this. It's Harris again. And Rivers never got the ball. Yeah, we'll take a look from this angle and see if he actually broke the... He, I mean, it was it was close. It was certainly close as to whether or not he had gotten into the neutral zone prior to that ball being snapped. I tell you, there's something in the cadence by Phillip Rivers that Tommy Harris, who is right over the center guard area, and he can hear the cadence. And he's getting an awfully good jump on Phillip Rivers' cadence. As I suggested earlier, he needs to mix it up. Handoff is to Benson looking for breathing room. He almost lost the football. 
He got out to the five, picked up three. A ball almost came out right there. Yeah, and breathing room is the right thing to say, Joe, because as an offense, when you're backed up like Chicago is right now, the first thing and the only thing you're focused on is picking up one first down and trying to give your punter a little bit of room. Otherwise, he's going to be backed up against that goal line. This is an important stop for the San Diego Chargers in keeping good field position. Play action from Grossman from the end zone completes it to Desmond Clark. And the tight end with a huge first down for Chicago, 24 yards from Rex Grossman. Yeah, that's a, that's a good job by Rex Grossman in the end zone, knowing that he's going to get pressure and hanging in there and delivering a strike. Boy, he hit his back step, back foot, got the ball out on the money to Desmond Clark, who came from the far side of the field to make that reception. A career best 626 yards last year for Desmond Clark taking place. It was second and goal from about four inches away with San Diego poised to at the very least tie the game if not get their first lead. And the force fumble on that play by Tommy Harris give him credit he's been on his toes and launching himself across the line of scrimmage all afternoon. And Phillip Rivers right now I think he's just trying to cool off after being. <laughs> Livid well, and furious with the no call. Yeah, and, and give this Chicago offense credit too, coming off the goal line, making a big throw there to Desmond Clark and getting them now well into the field, the open field, to where they can operate their offense. Second and eight for Grossman, who's flushed out and just throws it away. Let's go down to the field and Pam Oliver. Pam. Well, when I had a chance to walk off with Lovey Smith, he said a couple of things. He is hoping that the Bears go to that proven formula of our defense being our offense, meaning relying on the Bears' defensive turnovers and hopes it results in points, but he's not giving the offense a free pass. He said they've got to get something going. We're going to be committed to running the football, but we'd better protect it. So Cedric Benson has some making up to do, Joe. All right. Thank you, Pam. There are the numbers. It's been a great run under Lovey Smith. Who brought the Bears their first NFC championship in 21 years last season. Grossman throws out of the reach of Barry and it's fourth down. But an impressive day to say the least for each defense. A little better for Chicago and it's Vasher. Off the edge a sack untouched. Well, here's Nathan Basher off the edge. And just nobody goes out to block him. Whether Philip Rivers should have known that he was going to be the free blitzer and get the ball out, or if there was a mix up in protection where maybe Ladanian Tomlinson should have worked that way and seen it, doesn't really matter. The end result is Nathan Basher got the sack. I tell you, this has been a heck of a debut for Bob Babich, the defensive coordinator in his first year. At the controls for Chicago Tomlinson on a screen trying to outrun the defense and Briggs wins that race. A gain of only six third and long coming up and for Babbage with the guy who was doing it for the Bears Ron Rivera on the other sideline now coaching for North Turner and the San Diego Chargers Babbage has had a brilliant first day. Well they've been outstanding here today and the one thing that we have seen more so I think than what we've seen in previous years certainly last year from the Bears is his willingness to bring a little more pressure and we've seen that here two plays ago with with Nathan Basher coming off the edge but we've also seen it at various times earlier in the game and nobody's more excited about that than Erlacher. Rivers fires wide open his gates left alone first down San Diego 18 yard completion. Yeah, and this time Joe they play coverage they don't bring anybody you're going to see the safeties here they go to a two deep coverage the safeties playing deep the corner here Nathan Basher keep an eye on him he comes up on the flat right there and that's what opens up that throwing lane in behind him to Antonio Gates the safeties in a bind and because Basher jumped the underneath route that's what created the hole. Michael Turner is in the game and he gets the ball. 
Here's a guy who got a two point three five million dollar deal to stick around to back up Tomlinson last year had six point three yards per carry two touchdowns and only 80 carries rushed for 502 yards. He's a good one second down and seven. You know what he is a good one Joe and I and I like him in the game right now just to try to you know he's a little different style runner than what LaDainian Tomlinson is. I mean this guy's a bowling ball and he just bangs people not shy of contact. He might be able to do some things against the stout defensive front right now for the Bears. Second down and seven over the middle. Erlacher in on the stop. Briggs as well as Antonio Gates makes another catch. He's two yards shy of a first down. You talk about Bob Babich bringing pressure, Troy. You realize it's been 31 games since Brian Erlacher last had a sack. Erlacher last rung up a sack. October 16th of 2005 and he's excited about coming after the quarterback a little more here this year. Yeah and I know last year when he didn't get one he says it wasn't because I didn't blitz the quarterback I just couldn't get home. He says hey it doesn't bother me but I can tell you it does because I know he likes being around the ball. He likes being a playmaker. It's what he's accustomed to. Third and two out of the shotgun and the pass is way behind Tomlinson. Erlacher was out there in coverage and it's fourth down. Yeah and I tell you it's a good thing that Philip Rivers didn't put that ball where it could have been because if he had a Brian Erlacher is going to be going the other way with it. Here he is in the middle. He reads the route the entire way and gets a pretty good jump on this ball. And had he have been it had he have led Tomlinson I think Erlacher is going to the house for six points. A total of 12 punts in this game as Cyphers puts the nose of the football down and it goes straight up in the air. Hits off a bear and the San Diego Chargers have it. It hit McGowan. With it counting for North Turner. Trying to find some rhythm down the field in the air. After a bobble by Jackson had a shot at it couldn't haul it in incomplete I'll tell you that ball was right on the money it did not look like the defender's hand got on it Vincent Jackson he's in the slot and he's going to go to the middle Hill and Huntmeyer trailing him did he get a hand on it it did not look like it but it sure surprised Jackson came off his shoulder pads and generally when a ball Ricochets off the shoulder pad like that when you've got three defenders in the area. It's a sure interception fortunate that ball got to the ground. Yeah, I think Hillenmeyer got his hand on it just a bit. It came up and hit high off Vincent Jackson five drops today for San Diego. And with Rivers throwing scrambling for his life the pass is caught. By Vincent Jackson. Now here's the play before Hunter Hillenmeyer actually deflecting it just enough to save the touchdown. You know Hunter Hillenmeyer he's he's the guy who nobody really talks about with regards to this defense primarily because of Brian Erlacher and then Lance Briggs but I think he's an exceptional football player. I mean he fits this group extremely well. And played well last year for him. He's made some nice plays here this afternoon. That was a good catch on that last one by Vincent Jackson and Lorenzo Neal, the fullback, who was eight for eight on third and one last year, converts here. First down, San Diego as Neal gets three. Now, Lorenzo Neal is a pretty remarkable individual in my book. I mean, a 15 year veteran who plays fullback is blocked for. 10 straight thousand yard rushers. You just don't see many fullbacks like him in the league today, especially guys that can play 15 years. I asked him how his body felt after all the punishment all these years, and he said he has an occasional sore neck, which I think he has a lot more than that. Tomlinson's going to throw. Gates. Touchdown, San Diego. And Tomlinson, a perfect passer rating in his career. Seven touchdown passes. Perry and Juggles catches it and has a first down for Chicago, and that could do it for the third quarter here in San Diego.
Good throw there by Rex Grossman. Yeah, that's an area of the field here where they've had some success is on this square in at about 18 yards. And Barron almost drops this one, but he's able to hang on to it to pick up some pretty good yardage on the play. But San Diego playing soft in coverage. And Chicago able to take advantage of that hole within the zone. Bears don't have to run another play before the end of the quarter. They do. Merriman coming off the edge. Grossman gets away from him, throws it into the ground, and it's second and ten. Sean Merriman was coming. And he's over there on the sideline with a cap on his head with Adrian Peterson in the game. Bears down by four, beginning of the fourth quarter. Second and ten. Grossman steps up, sideline, and throws it away. In case you missed Fox NFL Sunday, shame on you. Here's what you missed. Gonzalez has revealed to me that this offseason, he was hit with Bell's palsy. We also want to welcome back Jillian Barbary, yes. who is yes. now Jillian Reynolds. She can't spend all the money you got anyway, Mike. He's playing for a grumpy old coach. Hey, Bob, look at the source. Oh. Hey. Frank got his butt kicked by a I preschooler. Like <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's what you missed today prior to kickoff of the early games. Here is Adrian Peterson. And he picks up a first down on third and ten. What a call that was and a run by Adrian Peterson. Big first down. Yeah, it really was because the Chargers, for the most part, haven't been getting all that much pressure on Rex Grossman. And they're at third and long. Third and long, Ron Turner. He dials up the draw to Adrian Peterson for a big first down. Ron Turner, the offensive coordinator for Chicago, the baby brother to Norv Turner, the head coach in his first year with San Diego. Peterson again, boy, he just ran over somebody. <laughs> right in the middle of that defense, that was Wilhelm. Gain of five, here's Kurt Menefee in a game break. Well, Joe, the Raiders defense did it for them last year. They get a turnover deep in Lions territory, and Lamont Jordan makes it pay off. Four plays later, he gets the 12-yard score, and it's now just a three-point game as they're going crazy in the black hole. Joe? All right, Kurt, thank you. Here, a four-point game in Chicago. Second down and five. Peterson again. He loses the football. And the Chargers take over. Advantage of the fourth bear turnover. Rivers spins and hits Gates. However they have to do it. However they have to disguise it. They're trying to get the ball into the arms of Antonio Gates and a little pirouette away from center from Phillip Rivers. Yeah, and that's what they've got to do. You've got Adam Archuleta right here. He's outside, and when they bring the eighth guy up like that, that creates the one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and you've got to be able to take advantage of that. Of course, when you've got Antonio Gates out there, regardless of who he's lined up on, more times than not, he's going to win that battle. But that's an area where San Diego just hasn't taken advantage of it in this game. Tomlinson gets zipped. Nothing. Antonio Gates just has put together his ninth career 100 yard game. And for Ladanian Tomlinson, the difference in this game, his seventh career touchdown pass. He's now number two all time to Walter Payton, the great Chicago running back who Ladanian grew up idolizing growing up in Texas for quarterback throws by. Or rather, touchdown throws by non quarterbacks. Peyton had eight. Tomlinson has seven. The latest to Gates in this game. Second and 11. Rivers setting up a screen for Ladanian Tomlinson, blocking out in front of it. Tomlinson scoops out of bounds at the 24. Well, again, you're going to see Adam Archuleta right here. He's going to come running up, thinking run, and then all of a sudden he realizes he's got to get out there in man-to-man -man coverage on LaDainian Tomlinson. You got Nick Hardwick, the, the center, getting out on him, which creates the running lane then for LaDainian Tomlinson underneath. Good call there. Right now, the Chargers are able to start mixing some things up with what they're doing offensively, and now starting to finally get the Chicago Bears defensively on their heels. Handoff is to Turner. He's down inside the 20 to the 19-yard line, picked up five. That last 
screen play to Tomlinson, a 20 yard play, his biggest effort of the day. Second down and five for San Diego. North Turner was talking about the Thursday night game between Indianapolis and New Orleans, saying you could see both teams trying to feel each other out, trying to find their rhythm. So it didn't surprise him that Indianapolis pulled away in that second half. But the Chargers are trying to get some traction here against the Bears. Second and five. Turner again stays on his feet and he's a yard shy of a first down. I tell you what, it's a battle inside here in the pits. You're going to see Nick Hardwick, who is a Pro Bowl center on Tommy Harris. He's right here, Hardwick is, and the block that he's able to put on Harris, not a lot, but just enough to move him to give Michael Turner then the running lane to get inside of that. And then you had the right tackle, Shane Olivier, staying on his block. Those are hard-earned yards right now inside those tackles. Third and one. Rivers keeps it and picks it up. First down at the 13 yard line. And to go back to what you were talking about, Joe, on the touchdown throw by LaDainian Tomlinson, you know, when you're playing a defense like the Bears that pursues so heavily, and they've got linebackers that run sideline to sideline as they do, then you've got to sometimes do some misdirection and, and use some creativity in order to move the football. And that's why Antonio Gates was as open as what he was. Under 10 to play. Chargers lead by four. Blitz coming from the Bears. Tomlinson down to the seventh. Gain of six. You're going to take a look at Lorenzo Neal. He just throws Mike Brown to the ground. Should have been a call. Should have been a penalty on Lorenzo Neal. Here he is and watch the horse collar that he puts on Mike Brown. Mike Brown trying to fight it off and he's got his right arm around his neck and then just throws him to the ground. In fact, Lorenzo Neal got up expecting to see a flag, but the official didn't see it. And it's Brown who is slow to get up. No hold on the play. It's a 7-3 game. And Gates at the bottom of your screen. Handoff is to Tomlinson. There he is into the end zone. Touchdown Chargers. That last 29-yard kick return by Devin Hester, his first yards of the day. Grossman sets up, fires, hits Desmond Clark, his tight end, and out in space. Jammer makes the tackle, a gain of six, down to Pam Oliver. Well, Mike Brown got up smiling, but he didn't get good news from the trainers. Brown has a knee sprain to go along with that long list of injuries. One of the Bears' captains, defensive captains, while well, he's done for the day. It's bad news for Chicago and for Mike Brown who has been injured the last three years. 31 games missed over the last three seasons with knee and foot issues. There's a good throw. Berrien on the other end. Bernard Berrien's looking for a face mask call. No flag on the ground, but a 16-yard completion and a good block by Cedric Benson to give Rex Grossman some time. Yeah, they're doing a pretty good job as far as giving him some time. That time, Benson on Sean Merriman able to slow him down enough. The San Diego Chargers expecting run on that last play, manned up on the outside, and Rex Grossman made a good throw. Rex Grossman being asked to bring his team back, down two scores, and Nassim Muhammad won't go down. Stays on his feet, an impressive run after the catch. And the moose call here in San Diego with all these Bear fans, a gain of eight plus. You know, Rex Grossman leads Moose and Muhammad up the field, which is why Jammer was able to get a pretty good hit on him. But so often as we see, we just don't see the wrap up there by Quentin Jammer. Great effort by Moose and Muhammad picking up the extra yards. I think he's, I've always liked Moose and Muhammad. I like the way in which he plays. He's a blue collar type guy and he makes those kinds of plays week in and week out. Chicago needs a touchdown and they hand to Cedric Benson on second and short and he goes backward. 
Castillo and Jamal Williams in there. Luis Castillo missed seven starts last year. Still had seven sacks. Had an ankle injury, and he's regarded as one of the best defensive ends in the league. Yeah, and I know we've talked a lot about the job that Chicago has done against LaDainian Tomlinson, but I tell you, this Chargers defensive front's done a real good job against Cedric Benson. Third and two. Peterson, fresh off his fumble, tiptoes to the line. It's fourth down. Little hesitation by Adrian Peterson. And it's going to be fourth down in about a yard and a half. And you're going to see why he was tiptoeing, not that he should have. Watch the line right through there. And then where the movement takes place. Reuben Brown tries pulling to, put, to knock out to give the lane. And the San Diego Chargers defensive front just does a really nice job of reestablishing the line of scrimmage. Fourth down. Benson trying to force his way for the first down. He did not get it. Built to play good defense, and Jamal Williams on that last stop. Outstanding. Tomlinson brought down in the backfield, got back to the line of scrimmage. Anderson on the tackle. And so now the running game, which has always been good since LaDainian Tomlinson came here to San Diego. We'll see a lot of it while they try to milk some of this clock. Yeah, this is really where they do want to have those early runs where they weren't having much success, pay dividends for them and start wearing this defense down. I don't know that this defense is tired. I mean, we're talking about one of the best defenses in the National Football League, but if they're going to have a chance in this game, they're not going to be able to allow Chicago or to allow San Diego, that is, to take time off the clock running the football. Under five and a half to play. And this one is Damana Malayuna, the big tight end. More a blocker than a receiver, but definitely a threat. Picks up four, it's third down. Brian Erlacher with a Mana Malayuna's dropped some weight. He has lost a number of pounds and is listed at 288. He was bigger in years past, and for a guy that caught three touchdowns a year ago, he's a guy you have to respect out in out in pass patterns. Yeah, and they list him at 288. I think he's actually more like 300. And then last year he was playing at about 320. He lost a little weight to to get down to 300. But because he can run, you're right. You do have to at least be aware of him when he's on the field. That's him in motion and in the backfield. It's third down. Rivers steps up and finds Ladanian Tomlinson. And Tomlinson lunges for a first down. A big first down for San Diego, and Tomlinson got it by half a yard. That's such a good job by Phillip Rivers just navigating the pass rush and knowing exactly where he needed to go to his check down in Ladanian Tomlinson. I came on earlier talking about this being an area of improvement for Phillip Rivers. And right here, rather than try to force something down the field, trying to pick up a first down, he gets it to a great running back with the ball in his hands. And then Ladanian's able to do enough to move the chains. Turner now in the backfield as the tailback. A blitz coming from the Bears, and Turner blows right by it. Stays on his feet and picks up nine and a half. Because he's going to be a valuable part of this offense throughout the rest of this season, as he was last year. They give it to Neal, the up back, and the full back picks it up again. We've learned a few things here today for sure. For the turnover, the interception that he had down in the red zone, the running backs just didn't get it done for him today. Turner on first down picks up nothing really, and the clock will now be stopped by Chicago. I'm not sure I buy it. Maybe then that was the picture when they were wedding crashes. Penalty flag comes in. May have been a face mask at the end of that play. Michael Turner got it. And overall, they've been a team that relies on their defense and their special teams. And that play on special teams, the ball came up and hit McGowan as freakish a play as it was, was really a big turning point in this game. They trail by 11 with two minutes left. Here's Turner again. And he's down to the 19-yard line. It'll be third down. 
The OT is coming right up after this game presented by Lowe's. And the guys will get you caught up on everything that happened today. Look ahead to tonight and then of course next week. Week two of the NFL season. A minute 40 and counting down. Bears are out of timeouts and Chicago will start this season 0 and 1. Yeah, and even on their long flight back to Chicago when this one's over, I mean, just think of all the opportunities as they reflect back on this game that could have changed the outcome. I mean, a lot of strange things happened in this game, but a lot of things that the Bears were just una unable to take advantage of. Third down and three. Turner is going to pick up the first down impressively. Down to the eight. 